time for Nut and Fancy's review of the Red Osborne Axis 960 model, 960. I know some of you guys have really been wanting me to review this. To be honest, it's a hard knife to find. This is not a knife I can go down to, you know, the local sporting goods store and find it. To find it in person is difficult. And like I said in another video, I did contact Benchmade attempting to get one directly. They denied me and said, nope. Um, that's not their policy to give knives to online reviewers. They might change as years go, months and years go by and the nothing fancy thing gets bigger and bigger. Um, and they might revisit that. However, I do have other sources for these knives. And thank you again to Impact Guns here. I'm at one of their retail locations. You can go to impactguns.com. No, I'm not advertising for them. And no, I don't get money for them. But they are a very cool retailer that allows me to come in and show you blades like this and they basically give me free run of the store to do anything I want in terms of review so thank you impact back to the knife let me tell you right now that the Benchmade 960 is a home run it is a 10 out of 10 buy nothing fancy yeah you know I some I'm not easily excitable well just depends on what's going on sometimes I'm easily excitable when faced with a right gun, right blade, right piece of tactical gear or backpacking gear. And this is just such a design. I was hesitant on the 960 about getting one for myself. One, because it's expensive, very expensive. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what impact selling it for, but it's, it's not a cheap knife along the order of 150 bucks on up. Um, your price may vary, I don't know, more or less, who cares. Just suffice it to say, this is not a $50 knife. It's freaking expensive. So that's one reason I'm hesitant to add it. It's not a high value knife. That's a hit I'm going to just level against this. By that I mean, are we getting a ton for our money? Uh, well, define ton. You know, and look at my Brad, Bradley alias video and I talk about kind of like um, the philosophy of value there. And the same thing applies here. It just depends on who you are and what you define as being worth or worthwhile to you. And to a lot of knife people, a lot of knife collectors, this will be a very worthwhile blade. So again, one of the reasons I was reticent about getting one myself is the cost. The second reason is the shape of the blade. Generally, and you'll see this in my future videos, I'm not a huge fan of a spear-shaped blade generally speaking, for my EDC blades. I'd much prefer, and I'm going to use a Benchmade Infidel for my pointer. <laughs> I know there's some wicked blades here, guys. Expect to see, peek a -boo, Infidel. Yeah, expect to see a review of that. Anyways, back to the grind. I much prefer to have that grind run all the way up. Um, kind of along the lines of the 940 series. I don't think those, those are reverse Tanto blades on the Benchmade 940s. I love that blade shape. Um, anyways, a spear point blade, uh, let me see what's another version of it that I just don't dig. I'll think and see if I can remember of it. Anyways, I'm not a huge fan for EDC, but having looked at the 960 in person, uh, it's not an issue for me anymore. I love it. There's enough run of a full flat ground portion on the blade that there's going to be a lot of cutting utility in this EDC knife. And that's how I'm going to classify this knife. This is not a folding tactical. This is too small to be a folding tactical. I, I don't have my ruler or my specs with me, but I assume that it's going to be all along the lines of maybe, I don't know, two and a half inches, two and three quarter inch blade. So it's sub three inches, maybe exactly three. I don't know. Don't know. Don't care. But uh, it's an EDC knife. And I think it's got a very adequate grind on it for that. This one is in D2 steel, as you can see by the Tang stamp there. D2, I think, is a good EDC choice. It holds an edge. I'd actually prefer over DT, D2, uh, probably 154CM and or S30V. Um, D2 is kind of hard for me to sharpen. I, I'm a kind of a tard when it comes to sharpening, but I like to... Uh, not waste time too. I got a lot going on, so I can't spend all day sharpening my knives. But D2 is a decent steel. Not a super great steel for full size wilderness knives just because it's so dang brittle. But for EDC, not too shabby. Um, so that's the blade shape. It's got the dual thumb studs, very typical 
um, bent, uh, for Benchmade. Very nicely executed. Good traction on those thumb studs. How's the deployment? Well, I've talked in a lot of other videos how the deployment is on Benchmade knives, and it just rocks. It's fast. Again, who needs an automatic knife when you have a manual knife that, depl that deploys so readily? I don't. You know, who needs to mess with the legality if you're a civilian or just the hassle of it? Uh, I'm trying to get my lights set up here, sorry. So, deployment's really fast and lockup is very tight. Very typical of Benchmade. I would expect nothing less from them and it delivers in that category. Comes very, very sharp, very sharp as Benchmades often do. Nice. Let's look at that handle and man, is that a good looking handle. It's anodized aluminum. It's got the carbon fiber inlay on it. Nicely machined. Look how fine the workmanship is on the Benchmade 960. You can see that everything's flush. It's precision ground. It's very well fitted to the handle, that carbon fiber or G10. I forget. I think it's CF. Uh, I think that's CF material there. And it's just fitted perfectly. And that gets probably to why it costs so much. That when you get into workmanship along these lines and any handle that you ever see like that, it's going to cost more. Love the red color. I'm a big fan of red colored knives. Different colored knives, all kinds. I know I show a lot of tactical blades to you in black and OD, but that, that's not to say <laughs> drop that's not to say I do not like a colored handle, and you've seen those maybe in my uh, Benchmade, uh, those Auto Presidios I showed you. I have some very nice colorations of those. Beautiful, nice. Love it. Let's, look how that centers in the handle almost perfectly. Very nice. How's that clip? Highly polished stainless steel. There's nothing rough under there to grab your pants and rip up the cloth. Not reversible uh, from pivot or tip up to tip down. As I've said before, I like tip-up carry, and I do not think it's unsafe to carry knives that way. I've never had one open up on me in the pants pocket. You're going to say, well, what about the tenacious cut you got? Dude, that opened up in a fanny pack being jostled around. I wasn't even wearing it. So that's not in pants carry. I think when a knife is carried as intended in the pocket, it'll have general, most knives, not all, but they'll have enough retention and ball detent tension to stay in the handle. And speaking of which, this is actually perfect. The ball detent on the 960 is decent. It's not too hard, not too soft, just like, you know, Goldilocks, just right. Back to the clip, though, nice. You can reverse it left and right if you need to. It's beautiful. And I like that polished clip because I think it falls very nicely in line with the colors and the lines of the 960, don't you? Beautiful. It's just gorgeous. And Let's look at the finish on the blade. I didn't talk about that. Nice scotch bright finish. Very, uh, just identical to the 940 series that I've reviewed. There's a pivot screw. On one side, it's uh, some type of uh, like non-usable, uh, I think that's just a, an aesthetic grind pattern in that pivot screw. But if we flip it, then we got a mini torque screw that we can't actually adjust the pivot. Won't need to do that though, because it's perfect as it comes. There's your axis lock which I love. I love axis locks. I actually like them better than liner locks, truth be told. I think they're awesome. Strong, fast to actuate. I know a lot of you guys like to open up your knives, you know, with the axis lock. I suck at it, at least with this version. Um, and like I said in other videos, I just keep my opening consistent. In other words, across the board. It's not an open design. It has a purple titanium spacer on the back, which is beautiful. It may not match perfectly with that red, but I still I always love that titanium spacer that Benchmade uses right along through here. Wow, that's good looking. Good looking. Man, it's just a nice knife. Didn't even talk about the weight yet. It's uh, Actually, I got my scale. I measured it. It's 2.2 ounces. Wow, that's light. Yeah, nothing fancy. He's a big fan of light blades. Always will be. And this is a strong, fast to point, solid lockup, super lightweight EDC that's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. And it's heirloom quality. It's something you could pass down to your kids. Yeah, it costs a lot, but a lot of times good things in life do. And you'll have to decide whether it's worth it or not. Uh, to me, I think it is. After handling this knife and feeling it and the extreme 
level of craftsmanship and quality in the Benchmade 960. I highly recommend it. There's your review, guys. Nothing fancy. Thanks so much for the good ratings, for subscribing. It keeps me going. Can't do it without you. We'll see you soon.